Welcome back to our fourth and final episode of Creative Journaling. For this last episode, I'd like to take just a couple of minutes to share a few more uh, non-traditional ideas with you briefly. It's important to remember again that these are just examples of things that you can use in your journaling and that you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to participate in any of these methods of journaling. For the ones I'm going to share today, you can simply purchase um, a three ring binder, uh, one of those spiral notebooks, large or small, uh, whatever your personal preference is, um, steno books, if you remember what steno books are, or uh, a blank journal that you find somewhere. And any of these methods can be done in any of those types of books. The first one I'd like to share with you today is picture journals. In this type of journal, you attach a small photo to the top corner or the top of your journal page and that's going to serve as a visual prompt for you as you pray. Now if you decide on a picture prayer journal, the people that you're praying for, the places that you're praying for, things or even situations that you might be praying for. For instance, if you're praying using this journal as a prayer journal for praying for your children or your grandchildren or nieces or nephews, a group of people in your family. Um, you might take a small school photo, those are great sized, attach it to the upper left or right hand corner, write the child's name and birth date at the top, and then you have space below that to write out prayer requests, prayers, um, praises, scriptures that come to your mind during your prayer time with the Lord. If you've got five children, then take your book, your notebook, your spiral, your steno book, if it's 180 pages, divide it by five and space them out, and that way you have enough room to record several things through several sessions of journaling and prayer time, um, and you're not having to replace and remake this thing every little bit. Um, you can also use this, I mentioned families, like praying for grandchildren or something, but your small group could use it um, to pray for the um, requests among the group. You could pray for missionaries, news headlines, so so many things you can do with this prayer journal. Uh, that's a picture prayer journal. Then we have a pictorial prayer journal, which sounds about the same, but there are just a few differences. Where the picture prayer journal only has one photo in it, in the upper corner, kind of a small piece, just to be a quick visual prompt for you to then journal the things that come to your mind, this pictorial journal is going to be filled with photographs. So if you're visual, if you're a photographer who loves images, this may be the one for you because you're just going to fill this book up with all of your beautiful photographs. Just make sure, as you do, remember these are prompts. You're putting them in there to prompt you during your prayer time. So make sure you leave a little space around those photos so that during your time with the Lord, when you're in prayer, and you want to write things down, you have some space to do it around those photos. So one photo may trigger um, a particular request or thought or scripture passage or um, a line or two of prayer from you and you want to write it down by that photograph to have that recorded. So you want to make sure that you do that. Um, and then the last one I want to talk to you about today um, is called a legacy journal. And this one's just a little different from any of the other journals we've talked about in that the whole idea behind a legacy journal is that it's done intergenerationally. So I have a legacy journal that my husband and I do with our grandchildren. So there's that intergenerational thing. And the idea behind this is that we're coming together and we're sharing requests, we're sharing praises, we have a tool to open some communication and some dialogue to come together um, in situations where we want to lift something in prayer. And so all of the participants, my husband, all of my grandchildren um, that are of age that can, we all have access to this journal. Now, yes, we live all across the country. They don't always have physical access to it, but they can call me, text me, send me an iPod message uh, and say, Grandma, can you put this in the journal? Here's my prayer request or here's my praise. And so we can all make our entries, uh, whether they're requests or praises, and this is just a great, great tool. Um, it just, there it is to provide that dialogue. And I mentioned um, that we use it with our grandkids, but parents could use it with their children, 
can be used in a Sunday school class. Um, there are just so many possibilities for this. And even though the idea is intergenerational, you know, your small group could use it, and you may all be of the same generation, but it still brings you together um, to discuss and have this tool um, where you're all sharing with this one common purpose and this one common focus. And again, if you're using it intergenerationally, if your grandparents using it with grandchildren, parents using it with children, it also becomes a wonderful way to model prayer. Um, you can model the actual act of praying. You can discuss the questions and the things that children have about prayer. Um, they can watch you as you're praying and sharing over requests and as you're lifting up worship and praise to our Heavenly Father, just a helpful tool for children to learn about prayer. So as we start to come to a close, we have discussed several non-traditional creative ways to journal uh, throughout our look at creative journaling. No matter which it is, picture journal, uh, legacy journal, praying in color, journables, it is important to remember that no matter what type we have discussed, that there's no rules. None of these have hard set rules where if you decide I want to do this type of journaling, I have to do it a certain way. These are merely ideas and suggestions to get you started on your outside the box journaling experience. Take any of these ideas that we have talked about, that we've seen an example um, through this series, and use them as you saw them. Mix them, take components of this one and that one and mix them together, adjust them. Do something completely different that we didn't even talk about, but maybe you got the idea as you were thinking more outside the box. Whatever it is, design your own journal and design it to be uniquely you. Make it your own, but make sure you make it doable. Don't set this lofty goal that you know that you can just not ever take the time to get it done. Journals are tools. That's all they are. They're tools. They're tools for helping you engage with and connect with your Heavenly Father. Hopefully, through some of the ideas presented here in this series, you'll be able to discover a journaling method that speaks directly to your heart, draws you in, and creates channels that enable you to cultivate a practice that encourages and facilitates your spiritual growth as you engage with Him more intentionally and consistently. As we wrap up this series, though, it is important for me to remind you that while I've been touting creative journaling, we should never dismiss the more traditional journaling forms. Creative, traditional, each is valuable, each has its place. Traditional, for those where the more creative methods would just be totally overwhelming. For the verbal, for seasons of simplicity, when it's just the right ingredient for the mix of your life at this time. Creative, for those who can't sit still or stay focused while doing more traditional journaling. For the visual, for when you need to breathe fresh air into your journaling or your spiritual walk. When it's just the right mix for what you have going on in your life right now. No matter which type of journaling you choose to engage in, you are sure to benefit from the practice. You will be blessed as the time you spend with your Heavenly Father becomes more intentional, consistent, and intimate. And you will be drawn closer to God as you lean more and more into Him. Through the spiritual discipline of journaling, you are sure to develop a more intimate relationship with Him as you find yourself in conversation with Him throughout your day. Conversation about the things you are reflecting on in your journal.